In this video, we are going to see the simulation of half wave control and uncontrolled rectifier. Basically, what is our rectifier? It's a AC to DC converter. So before we begin to our uh, rectifier, we will see what are the components required for the rectifier. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to click here Simulink Library Browser. In this, you can select all the elements what are required. First of all, we are designing our uh, uncontrolled rectifier. In that, we are required the diode. Okay, so I will search here diode. Then I will take diode from here and I will add to the my model. Then here I require my voltage source. Voltage source. Voltage source in that I require an AC voltage source. I will press enter. Here I will select the AC voltage source. Then after that uh, I need load also. Now for selecting of the load I can go to Simscape power system. In power system specialized technology in that fundamental in that elements. If you select elements, there will be elements like uh, RLC load. So in that there are two elements. One is RLC branch and one is RLC load. This is our single phase. Uh, this is our three phase. We need a single phase. This one. So I need the branch. If you select load, load is based on basically, I, I will show you. Load is basically based on the power rating of the device which you are selecting. See, there is a difference between load and the branch. If you see branch, we have to select R value, L value and C value. Whereas if you see the load, here power rating is there. Like what is the power rating, active power and what is the voltage RMS of the load and inductive, that is reactive power of the capacitor and inductor. On that rating we need to select. Either you know our value of R, L and C or you know our power rating. According to that you can define our system like our rectifier or inverter, whatsoever you are designing. So in this I require this branch so that I can define my R, L and C. So I have my AC voltage source. I have my diode. Now what is required? For designing the uncontrolled rectifier, I need uh, one load. Okay, load I will just make it straight. See, this is positive branch. So I'll make this, I'll join this part. So I think it's almost ready. We just need the measurement blocks. So I need the voltage measurement and the current measurement. Now in this Simscape only, when you do fundamental blocks, here measurement block is there. In that you can select our current and you can select our voltage measurement blocks. So it's here. Now I need scope. I can double click on the screen and I can search on the scope. So it's our scope. So what is my plan? Uh, I want to visualize all the waveform in all single screen. For that, I will double click the scope. In that, I will select our uh, ports like I need input voltage, output voltage uh, and uh, current. So I will select this as three. I need our three ports. And in this, I will select the screens. How many, how screens I want? I want one, two and three, one below the other. So here is my screen. Now this one I will put here. Now this I put here. I need first of all R load. I want to see how R load is working. And here is my voltage measurement block. So I'll just enhance its size because it's getting very small. And then I'll connect the voltmeter here. Uh, on the positive side positive terminal. On the negative side negative terminal will connect. One minute. So what is happening? I'll just delete it and I'll rejoin it again. So positive. Again it is coming so I'll just make it little further. So this is negative. Okay. So this is my voltage of output voltage when the R load is connected. Similar way we will connect here our positive to the positive terminal and negative to the negative terminal. And here I will do first of all input voltage on the first port of the scope. Second one is our output and third one is my current. So this is my diode. I will remove this measurement from uh, diode. Now what I will do is uh, AC source. What is my AC source? If you talk about our real actual source which is present at our homes, that is our 230 volts. But 230 volts is our RMS voltage but not peak, peak amplitude. So uh, basically if you want peak, RMS is what maximum by root 2. So maximum value I want that is RMS into root 2. So 230 into root 2. So what is the value of root 2? If I see, it is around 1.414. And frequency is how much? 50 volts. So if I do this and uh, R value I want, I will keep this as 1 or I will keep this as 10. Fine. So now I'll, mm, I need the main block. I forgot the power GUI. Power GUI. Yeah. Okay. Power GUI block. Now I will select this as 5. Uh, let's uh, check with the small. And uh, it's compiling. Let's wait for that. Yeah. It's compiled. Now we will see the waveforms. One minute. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Now we can see the waveforms. So this is C. It's not coming pure sine. So what we have to do is, uh, we have to go to model. In this, we have to change our configuration parameters. Let's see solver. So I will select this as discrete and now check our waveforms. It is showing some error. So now what I have to do is I'll go here. I will select my discrete. Uh, I'll just leave it as it is my sampling time. Now I'll see. I hope it will come pure sign now. Yep, it's pure sign. So basically whenever you're facing any problem for uh, like it is not come pure sign, just change the solver. By changing the solver, you will get pure sine wave. Now what I did is uh, I have taken R load. Now how my rectifier is working, let's see. Now I'll take this hand from here huh, and let's see. See, this is my zero point. Uh, you can see now I have just hold this waveform. This is my zero starting from zero. This is my one pulse. One minute. Huh, this is my one pulse, this one. Okay, if you've concentrated up to here, because of R, it's starting from zero up to half half waveform because of diode, because diode is a half control. That means it can allow the turn on. We can like positive will be there. It will become forward bias. And if negative will be there, it will become reverse bias. So in reverse bias, conduction is not possible. That's why my diode is not operating in the reverse waveform. We can see every time in positive only it is conducting in negative, it is getting switch off. And same way, current waveform is also following the voltage waveform because of R load nature. That's why uh, it's voltage, output voltage is same as that of this input voltage. But current, you can calculate from that formula as R, R we have taken as 10 ohms. Now, if you change the value of R to RL, now let's imagine what will happen. First, first we think what will happen. See, in, when R load is there, it is conducting up to that zero point. After that, it is getting turn off. But when L is also connected, what will happen? Let's run the simulation and check. Yes, we run the simulation. Now what is happening is it is conducting and very small. It is getting a negative waveform also. It is it is operating in small negative region also. So we have to see it more clearly. I will just increase the value of inductor. I'll increase the value of inductor and check. Now we can clearly see that it is operating in the negative region also because of the capacitor our negative voltage will also appear across our output. Now I don't want to appear this negative voltage. What I will do is I can connect the free willing diode. Okay, free willing diode what will happen is the value in the current that is stored here it will just free wheels here so because of that our output voltage which is coming in negative negative we have seen already will not appear. Okay, so I will reduce this time also because this is huge. I have to again again zoom in. So I will take one diode. Uh, one minute. Yep. I'll just connect one diode which is called as free willing diode. Now let's see what will happen. Yes, see it stopped conducting after after this half cycle that is 180 degrees. Like this way we can make our R, RL and RLE also. Let's try with the RLE. Just one minute. I will just remove this branch. That is our free wheeling diode. Now I'll connect this R, L, and E. That is our DC motor also we call. So I'll just uh, take here one voltage source. That is from sources. I will take here one DC voltage source. I've taken one DC voltage source. In DC voltage source, I'll keep this value as, okay, let's keep this as 100 only. I'll remove this and I will keep here 100. Now, first think what will happen. Yeah, it's connected. Now let's see what, now let's imagine what will happen if I run this simulation. Now what should happen is it is 100 volts. So up to 100, my current should be zero. And after 100, it should start conducting. That is my diode. Okay, let's see whether it is following that or not. Yes, it is following. See, up to 100, it started from 100. See, it started from 100 and it is operating and it is going from negative also. Okay, like this way, it is working. Now, uh, we will design this uh, uncontrolled rectifier to fully controlled, a semi-controlled rectifier. So, to operate the single phase half wave control, uncontrolled rectifier, we will make this as controlled rectifier by using thyristors. Now, let's search for thyristor. Where is the thyristor? This is our thyristor. Okay, so this is my thyristor. Now what I will do is, I will just remove this diode. Instead of that, I will connect one thyristor. 
uh, this is my thyristor and here i need one pulse generator pulse generator yeah pulse generator it came so i'll connect this to my gate and how pulse is i have to give now amplitude i need to give amplitude and uh, pulse period period is frequency i have taken as 50 hertz time period is 1 upon 50 that is 0 0.02 pulse i will leave this as 5 percent and phase delay like see it is now controlled rectifier single phase half wave controlled rectifier control means i can control the firing angle phase difference is firing angle that is 30 60 90 how much firing angle we need let's take this as 30 firing angle now first try this with the only r load where 10 ohms is considered i'll remove this dc branch and i will just join this and i will just hide this uh, branch so that it will not cause any problem uh -huh. so it is connected properly and uh, this is uh, fine and uh, this is 230 volts 50 hertz that is fine and now operate our system and let's see what will happen so here what is happening is uh one minute some issue is there in this so i have to rectify that issue what is happening here is um, i will remove the measurement port from here this is our pulse generator in this pulse generator amplitude is there phase angle is there time period is there okay what i did is mistake in phase delay i need to give in seconds whereas i have given in degrees now how to give in seconds so for giving in seconds i need to multiply multiply this by uh, time period and time period is what one minute uh, and time period is what 0 0.02 divided by 360 360 that's fine now let's run this simulation yes it's, yes it came so what happened is after 30 degree only it starts conducting we can see from here when we zoom here after 30 degrees it will start conducting and it will conduct up to 180 degrees because of it conducts up to positive half cycle in negative half cycle SCI become reverse wise and it gets turn off and current waveform follows our voltage waveform because of our R load now let's do one thing we will change this R to RL and we will keep the inductance value the same and let's try this and let's see what is happening now as i already told in the uncontrolled rectifier what is happening is it will operate in the negative half also because of the inductor inductor is very beautiful it doesn't allow sudden change in current as we already know so it trying to conduct in the negative half also to completely discharge so here what will happen it will discharge and then it will stop conduction and the current it will follow up to this point see inductor doesn't allow sudden change in current so it, sh it should have been stopped here but instead of this it went up to here and after that negative half it will not conduct and then here after that 30 degrees it will again get fired so to imagine it more clearly what i will do is i will just one add one more port from here i make this as four so that we can perfectly see where i'm giving my firing pulses okay so i will just shift my current and voltage a little bit down and here i will add one pulse also so that we can clearly see what is happening here so okay i have not done selection of four yes now it is fine so we can see now what is happening more clearly see so this is our 30 degree i am giving a pulse at 30 degree and then after that see after that it starts conducting i will zoom it more yes it's one cycle so at 30 degrees i have given one pulse at that point my scr start conducting and it, it conducts in the same way as our input voltage up to what up to when inductor will discharge up to this point see inductor discharge and up to that point only current will be there after that current is zero up to the cycle until and unless my scr is fired again in the next half cycle see in that way this rectifier is working which our control rectifier now let's try with the r l and voltage source that is r l e load okay so i'll just remove this here i will uncomment this i will add this here this is connected uh, and i'll try to see what is happening here so what is happening see we can see we have fired this here so it's starting at 100 it's not starting from zero it started from zero because there was no voltage source connected here so because of this e it will start from 100 initially instead of zero and when the firing pulse is given it will start conducting and conduct up to that point where inductor will completely discharge its energy and up to that point only 
see here it'll it'll work up to 180 degrees so here it will try to completely uh, finish its energy and after that it will become 100 instead of zero In this way the operation of half wave control and uncontrolled rectifier is done thank you for watching this video